The first time I came to China, I got impressed by the system that all people here are committed to. The epidemic has changed the life here a lot, and even my perspective to appreciate this country more. <laughs> Walt Disney before said, After the rain, the sun will reappear. There is life after the pain. The joy will still be here. As anything in this life, nothing is completely bad, 100% bad. Everything has its own benefits. Even the worst thing is happened in this life. I mean in a good way, not in a bad way. Just hear me out. You know, in terms of finding different ways to, to go through problems, uh, creative ways to, to succeed, and also it's, it's time to fix the things what are supposed to be fixed. I mean, I mean to find the problem that, that caused all of this, the problem that made all of this happen here in China or anywhere else. And also there, there are too many chances if you think deeply about any problem you have in this life. And I think that Chinese government, after this coronavirus epidemic, they will think deeply about treating animals here in China, especially wild, wild animals and, and food culture in general here in China. And also, it has some benefits on some businesses here in China. But for the vast majority of other Chinese businesses, they have been affected so badly because of the coronavirus epidemic, especially the small and medium businesses here. The ones who have to remain working, to remain paying bills, uh, costs and employees wages during this period of time because they they might have made some contracts, some uh, transactions uh, before the coronavirus outbreak and they have to remain working uh, during this tough time. It's, it's a very tough time but we have to learn something from this lesson. It's a, it's a kind of caution for all of us as well. We have to be cautious, we have to be always prepared with additional plans to deal with problem when it pop up in, in our life. We have to always be prepared with different mindset to to accept the problem first and try to deal with it uh, in, in the way it should be. And I got impressed with how the Chinese government deal with this problem so far. They have built uh, like a hospital in 10 days. This is very impressive for me and they they are about to, to start another one in, in the next 10 days as well. Yeah, and we have to, to learn something from this. Yes. I just got a well needed walk around the neighborhood. Yeah, it's uh, it was really well needed to refresh my mind a little bit. And I'm fully awake right now. Do you guys really want to see an actual day in my life during the epidemic? Glad you asked. I'll show you mine. As everything in China has changed, my daily routine has changed as well. I used to wake up at 5.30. As a Muslim, this is the time for the Fajr prayer. I keep my mobile phone away from bed, so there is no way but to wake up and turn the alarm off. I wash to get ready to pray. Why are you looking at me like this? The prayer time is currently 5.43 here in Guangzhou. After praying, I'll be fully awake. I just moved to Guangzhou early this year, and I rent this shared apartment. But thankfully, I have my private bathroom. So you will find me with the mask all the time outside my room. I just moved to a shared apartment 
here just a month ago but I'm not using the kitchen so often lately since the epidemic so obviously I'm just using the washing machine I wash my clothes right now and the refrigerator I'm not using anymore and that's pretty much what I'm using here yeah as the code said prevention is better than cure always I make a cup of coffee before heading down to have a walk around my neighborhood or to ride a bike then my day starts at 7 and I got some coffee from KFC and sometimes I would like to, to get my coffee from KFC not to make it at home just to wake me up a little bit it's pretty tricky I ordered two pieces of potato from KFC but she just gave me one sometimes I go with this with this option for me it's okay and I can I can eat these things because it's uh, just a potato and no meat inside it's a pretty cheap option and very good choice to, to get a quick and cheap uh, breakfast but due to the the coronavirus outbreak I cannot eat uh, outside anymore or indoors uh, inside a restaurant because I should get my mask out and I and that's really not good a choice to to go with or that's not secure anymore so I will eat this piece of potato and I'll drink uh, the coffee and I'll go back down in a few minutes they say you don't gotta go home but you can't stay here and no I don't wanna be alone in the world out there I tried this, tried that, tried everything coming right back, right back won't you wait for me I need you to stay right there I'm coming right away my dear today is February 12th and the virus is still spreading so fast the number of confirmed cases so far is 43,000 let me see 40, 44,787 actually today in, in the morning of uh, February 12th 1,112 deaths today is February 12th and the number of confirmed cases is 4, 43,147 so far today is February 10th and the virus is still spreading fast the number of confirmed cases have raised so fast in the previous two days because according to the, the Chinese government they said it would be the peak of the coronavirus uh, outbreak because it's uh, it was supposed to be the, the end of the Chinese holiday but it uh, but actually it isn't because I have been told from the, the company's uh, HR that we have to remain working from home until March 2nd and it's getting way more dangerous than ever before it's getting even way more dangerous than any disease or any virus that that happened on on the planet earth before because if it's compared with something like SARS uh, SARS in its full length of period has killed almost 800 and, and infected cases were almost 8,000 and we have today 44,787 and death is 1,112 so uh, obviously you can you can see here it's uh, the, the number of confirmed cases is almost 40,133 and before just before two days uh, they were just 30 34,000 or something so 6,000 in, in just two days this is so huge and this is so dangerous the first infected area here in China obviously it's a Hubei it, which is the uh, the province of uh, of Wuhan this one is uh, 29,631 uh, it was supposed to be the the peak of the of the coronavirus outbreak because the suspected cases that is spent under observation more than 14 days so that's why and the second most infected area is here in Guangdong which is the province that I'm living in right now that I'm dwelling in right now and uh, I just moved to Guangzhou early this year and I'm still in Guangzhou the number of confirmed cases is uh, 1177 and recovered actually has raised today it's uh, 212 but for me it is still very small portion very small percentage of people that have uh, recovered 
because it's almost like 20% or, or even 18 or 19% or something. Guangdong has actually uh, 1,131 confirmed cases so far and it's growing and recovered just 141. It's a very small portion, it's a very small percentage of people. From my perspective, it's, it's really bad, it's really dangerous. Uh, because it's almost 10% of the, of the confirmed cases just recovered and uh, unfortunately we have one death. Uh, yeah, and that's uh, all the update I have today. Yeah. We had to work from home since the coronavirus outbreak. To make it easier, we have an online virtual meeting each morning. Hey, good morning. They were 112, they became 212 right now. I work from 9 to 6, usually creating content and handling some marketing related stuff. I'm obviously a content operation specialist. The lunch break is from 12 to 1.30 pm. So it's a good chance for me to get a quick meal and drink some coffee. And I'll pray so. Then I'll make a phone call with my family and during this phone call, I should always say... I'm good. Everything is fine. Yeah, everything is fine. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Just to calm them down and to assure them of my safety. We still trying testing different approaches to raise the productivity while working from home. So what happened was unpredictable. Nobody expected that. That's why we're filling on a daily schedule each day. Uh, at the beginning of each morning, we were filling on a daily schedule in order to raise the productivity about our plan of each day. And also by the end of the day, we're filling on another uh, report to, to tell how much we achieved of what were planned. I just joined the, this company a month ago, which is a famous car rental company here in China. Uh, I'm still getting familiar with uh, industry, with uh, competitors and so on. So my job is not so structured as you think it is. My job right now is all about like uh, marketing strategy, making some analytics about, about our industry, about the competitors. Uh, implementation which is like making some content and distribute this content on social media platforms and so on so I'll continue doing what I'm doing right now and I'll meet you after almost 40 40 minutes it's uh, 523 right now uh, see you after 40 minutes then because this happened by chance to suddenly work from home so we're still trying testing different approaches to raise the productivity while working from home. It's almost 6.10 now. So that means that I have finished working and I can go and get some food right now. But let me show you something first. So I have this empty space here in, in the balcony and I'm thinking to make a small kitchen right here to get some electric uh, cookers or something to cook by myself and instead of always getting some food from one specific and certain kind of food because halal food it's a cuisine more other than it's a, it's all kind of food that I can eat as, as I told you because I'm, I'm having like very like a serious problem with food so far here in China so yeah, I hope I can do that in, like, in the future. I'm just sharing that with you. When I finish the first thing I do, I go for a walk to get a well-needed dinner. It's usually from this restaurant. It's obviously halal restaurant. So they are offering the same certain kind of dishes, the same type of food in any halal restaurant. So halal food is not, is not supposed to be so restricted like, like here in China. Uh, it's basically that I can eat any kind of food, Italian, uh, American, any kind of food, but with halal meat, that's it. In China, it's completely different case. As a Muslim, it's forbidden for me to eat any kind of meat but the halal ones. So that's why I'm usually getting my dinner from here, not specifically this one, just any halal restaurant like this one. 
This is my meal for today. Honestly, I'm having a bad experience with food here in China, with halal food here in China. I actually love this one. I love it. I love the, the taste, everything. But it's always the same thing in every and each uh, halal restaurant, even this one or another one. But it doesn't have to be the same certain kind of food or dishes. I can eat whatever I want to eat, but with halal meat. That's uh, what it should mean to be halal. Then I'll head to the grocery shop nearby to grab as much of things that I probably need for the next week. So I made a checklist for all the things that I might need to hopefully stay at home as long as I can. Super coffee native. I'm searching for coffee. Do you know where is coffee? <laughs> I finally got it. Yes, that's it. So I think now I got all the things that I might need for the next week. And I'm good to go. Hopefully I'll stay at home all this period of time. <laughs> Finally, I would say, strength is not born from strength. Strength can only be born from weakness. So be glad of your weakness now. They are the beginnings of your strength.